I wouldn't say it's, a, it's, it's new for South Africa, but yeah. new anywhere in the world. For example, in Singapore, you have Highflux, mm. which is a fully integrated business mm. you know, from the water abstraction right to the, to the end product mm. and the distribution of water and the, the manufacturing or the building of wastewater treatment plants. In South Africa, businesses, the water businesses are very disparate. Uh, meaning what I mean by that, they, they're, if, you build a, if you're an asset mine drainage, we have a, we are, we're, we're a mining country, for example, large mining country. So the rehabilitation of that water as your mine has to, has to be rehabilitated, that's law. So you would have a company do, that does acid mine drainage. When a municipal government was to build a new wastewater treatment plant, some other company does it. And another enterprise does the abstraction of water or groundwater for, say, rural areas. The Mega Water Corporation is established to take that complete, uh, the complete uh, ecosystem of the, of the uh, distribution of the business and create one solid solution or an integrated so solution because South Africa requires that because of its challenges. Right. Yeah. So uh, tell us about water in general. I mean, uh, you know, what are the kind of challenges that you see in South Africa specifically as well as generally given the fact that water is becoming a scarcer resource and not enough countries are putting enough effort, including right here in India, to address the problem? That's a very, very important question. i just just say to you very politely, I'm not a water engineer. I'm actually a former investment bank and a corporate lawyer. Right. But this, I have a passion to build an industrial water business, so I've learned something about water. In fact, there's sufficient water. Mm. It's the wastage of water. It's the misuse of water mm. uh, that, that has caused the shortage of water. Certainly, some countries are, um, are better endowed with water than other countries. For example, South Africa, we rank number 30. And we are a very parched country. So we don't receive a lot of water mm. or rainfall. Mm. And even Switzerland receives a lot of rain. Uh, Uganda has a higher rainfall. Uh, the Congo has got great water. Uh, and parts of India would have great water, I think, in the north and so forth. But water is becoming a significant challenge because the scarcity is produced with, the with not having the correct infrastructure to capture water or to deal with the water issues. The second important thing is that where there's infrastructure, this infrastructure is, de is, de is dilapidated. It needs to be refurbished. And because of the urbanization, say, in Africa or in India, you find that there's not sufficient infrastructure to bring water to people. So there's, there's a significant challenge around water. The most important thing is that when, for example, all your ministers yesterday spoke about power, you know, the new ministers, they're going to do this, infrastructure, you know, new politicians, they always come on the block, they're going to do better, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll I'm, I'm a South African, but I watch Indian politics very closely. We'll see what happens. But none of them spoke about the ingredient water. You cannot do anything without water. You can't, you can't grow food. You can't produce energy, you can't manufacture, you can't industrialize a country without water, you can't clean yourself without water. So water is very essential, it's germane to the civilization of us as a people. None of them spoke about it, it's the platform. So you, water becomes increasingly important. It becomes increasingly important if you can look at the finance budget and economic planning and make it central to economic planning. Most people don't do that. Most countries or governments don't do that. And that's a very important thing is that water has to be, the, the mindset has to change with governments and entities that water is integrated or as an economic planning factor. So that's, so you're saying that while there may be uh, uh, private enterprises like yours which will take the lead in fixing the problem at one end, but you need a, need a solid policy push and a recognition of the problem Correct. with the other. Correct. So tell us about the kind of work that you will be doing uh, in Mega Water and perhaps there are lessons for uh, entrepreneurs in India to do some. Sure. So when I, when I established the Mega Water Corporation, because South Africa had a huge challenge. I didn't wake up in the morning last year and establish. It took me three to four years. While I was a CEO of a company, an investment banker, I was looking at what, what would the opportunities be for South Africa. And I'd spotted water and energy for some time. You know, that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's my creativity, mm -hmm. is, is seeing the opportunity. And I said, this is chaos. But as I did my research and traveled the world to Southeast Asia and to other parts of the world, you know, I never came to India. So I realized that you can, this is a very significant opportunity for South Africa and for Africa. In South Africa, we have enormous problems with water, enormous challenges. We have rather old infrastructure that has to be rehabilitated. We have, we have to build new wastewater treatment plants. Because of our urbanization after the post 1994 uh, uh, democracy, which we, 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 we established. So more people are coming to the urban areas and more people are looking for jobs. So you have, uh, you have a, 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 a distress 
on the on the, uh, the water framework right. or industrial framework for to, to, to support. So in, in that regard, I think the challenges you face is the same: great urbanization in India, um, poor infrastructure. Um, you're a large country that is that produces a lot of food. Yeah. As we speak, the city of Delhi is talking about a significant cut in water supply. Yeah, yeah. So that sort of thing. Yeah. So as an irrigation is very big. Mm. So there's competing needs. Mm. The one need is the consumptive need, which is the need you and I, when we wake up, we want to have a good shower like I had upstairs. The other one is the upstream, the, 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 the bulk water that has to go to industry and has to go to the farmers. And in each of these models, Government has to have an economic planning policy around them where there's no wastage in water, where there's new technology, where there's awareness that water can be saved and be utilized properly. Because that, 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 that assists the economy. Right. So let me ask you the, uh, the, the flip side of the question. What's, what's going to happen if we don't pay attention to the problem of water uh, now and mm -hmm. with the intensity that uh, this problem deserves to be looked at? Yeah. Well, that's, then that's, you know, the, I would like to give you the proverbial answer, but we're on television, so I won't give you the proverbial <laughs> answer. What I will give you is an educated answer, is that we will be in very serious trouble. Because if we don't preserve the water and have new technologies and, and manage and pre, 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 uh, integrate a management system to water, we, we're going to find ourselves having to fi have conflict. There could be a war around water. You know, in, in your neighborhood, for example, your, um, that conflict could be civil unrest in water. For example, in South Africa, our constitution, our constitution is, is inscribed that water is a right. We have the third generation rights. We, we have a very advanced constitution. Mm -hmm. So I could see sometime people going to the constitutional court or rising up that already people are challenging that they don't have sufficient water because we have problems. But I can see this becoming a constitutional issue or, or, or legal issue. But you won't be able to industrialize as fast as you want as, you, as, you, as, as a country. Energy projects will slow down, transportation, farming. That all impacts upon the economies, the economy that services the society or feeds people. Whether it, and, and, and that will be a terrible problem when you can't grow sufficient food and, and there's a lack of, 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 of water. Right. Last question. So what's the first project that you are going to be working on or have already commenced to work on? The, I'm working on three very interesting projects. One is that I'm going to work on the rehabilitation of, of three, four hospitals in South Africa, meaning the infrastructure. You don't, like, for example, this building. If you go down to the, the, the gutter of this building, you'll see all sorts of pipes and mm -hmm. so forth, those pipes that bring the clean water and hot water. So in a hospital, for example, in South Africa, the infrastructure is so poor. Can you believe a hospital? So if we have a major problem at hospital, people could die. That's mm -hmm. how serious water is. Mm -hmm. So we're going to rehabilitate the pipes and the pumps and infrastructure, the water, and put a man water management system in for the municipal government. We're doing three hospitals. Uh, we're doing another project in another province around uh, uh, preventing the leakage. Mm -hmm. So in South Africa, the municipal governments have to buy water from a water body, which is a government body per se. And that water that they that sold onto the municipal government the municipal government loses 40% of that water leakage. It it's unconscionable. Mm. You will cut the math on that, the algorithm on 40%. Mm. So we're going to help them with the leakage. That's the second project. And then the third project is a very large project that we're looking at, and that is to do with c c building a new wastewater treatment plant. Yeah. In which part of Africa? South Africa. South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. In which part is that? Johannesburg. And in collaboration with the government? Or? In collaboration with the government, yeah. The government, we, we, these are all government projects. Okay. Yeah. And is that an easy thing? I mean, It's not easy because yeah. you know how governments work. There are a couple of things around this whole thing. One is that you have the, the, the municipal governments are corrupt and they also have their self-interest. So money is not spent well. Yeah. And the other problem that we have is that um, it takes a longer period of time for government to make its, 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 its make some decisions. However, our government has now made these decisions because South Africa, we're going through significant challenges and government wants to do del delivery. Hence, I was saying all this Modi magic must only relates to one thing. He must deliver to his people. We are not delivering to our people, and this is the problems that we face now. We have electricity, electricity shortages in South Africa, very significant, and, we're going to, and we have water shortages, and that's going to become very significant. Uh, Rudy Roberts, thank you very much for speaking thank, with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you.